It's been a crazy year, but I finally got some time to focus and to really get the models put together. And now I'm announcing release 1.5 of the Foxfire MBS system. Uh, a lot of what's going on here with Foxfire 1.5 is, I, I say this every time, but it's cleanup, model cleanup. One of the big things that I tried to focus on was getting rid of as much support material as possible with the models. So one of the things you can see, like look at the core, the um, stock attachment point here is now printed as a separate piece and it locks in here, as opposed to having the support material here. It makes it nice, it's cleaner, it makes it easier to print, and it uses less filament when you, when you print it as well. Um, I've also gone through a lot of the model pieces of the model and just kind of tightened up the tolerances a little bit. When I had my Lulzbot Mini that I used, uh, my first printer that I had, it was a really nice printer but it was a little sloppy as far as its tolerances so I would get things that came out a little bigger than, especially in the smaller parts, uh, a little bit bigger than what the model would indicate that they should. Um, and so I actually made the tolerances a little bit wider to account for that printer. And so it ended up, some of the pieces ended up being a little bit sloppy. Uh, the mag release is a good example of it. The triggers were another good example of it. Uh, things along those lines. So with my new um, Prusa, the Mark III S3, those tolerances are tightened up a lot. It's, it, the Mark III is actually a very nice printer. Of course, it's a newer printer. Um, and so I've gone through and changed a lot of these things so that they, the tolerances are more in line for a more precise printer. And that means if you have some, a, printer, an, uh, a cheaper printer that's sloppy, you might have to do a little bit of a filing or sanding to try to get some of the pieces to fit. That's because they've been designed for this higher tolerance uh, printers with the, with the Mark III. Also, I've gotten, uh, done some look and feel improvements here, specifically on the cores themselves. One thing I, I really disliked about the previous models that I never really got is what happens with this side of the full auto and the semi-auto core. I kind of had them inset, I had lettering on there, and a lot of times I'd take in when I was done with the blaster, I'd go through with a paintbrush and paint this in here. So I redesigned this part of the, of the cores, a lot of the changes here are in, in the cores, uh, and I made this a panel that attaches so you could unscrew it, screw it on, and that way I could print it it's flipped over from, from not being on the base, so I could print in, in two colors and I could get uh, the, the color switch at like two millimeters off the platform and I can get the writing on here. Get that nice look and feel uh, of that writing without having to go reverting to painting or anything like that. I, I did the, kind of the same, a little bit of a change on the battery doors as well on these things so they stick out farther. And with the panel on the back side and then the battery door, I've actually got about four more millimeters of width or the battery area, so you can. It makes it a lot easier to fit like a voltage alarm or something like that in with the, in the models. Still works the same with the thumb screw, and, and you know the, the design is, is changed slightly, but it even made that battery compartment a little bit bigger. For the battery that I, well, some of the batteries I use, they were a little bit tight, and now this kind of fixes that problem. The last change and the only new module uh, for 1.5 is this sleek. Uh, motor housing. I went through and renamed all the housings. I was getting so many letters that I couldn't keep them straight. So the, the housing G is now AFG for angle foregrip. The A is assault. The P is pistol. Uh, the, and then a couple other ones. But they've all got names to keep them up. This one is called Sleek. And this one is really, I think, where I wanted to end up when I started Foxfire, but I didn't have the modeling skills to get there. The biggest thing, if you look down the thing, it is much narrower than all the other ones, and it just barely fits 130 motors. You have to kind of solder them in a certain way on here so that the wiring doesn't hit. But I've gotten that sleek, and with the back, it kind of makes a, a more sleek back, and that's where I got the name for sleek. It's also a mid-size. It's between the, um, the, the, the long one, which I, I, the L, I can't remember the name. I renamed it now, and, and the short one, so it's a kind of a medium size but it's got that nice curved feel, so it feels really, really nice on there. So what I've got here showing you is uh, the blaster that I intend to run at the Nerf War that we're running. Uh, I got my, uh, my reflex sight, my holographic sight, which I'm really excited about getting that out on the field and, and playing with that. Uh, full auto with a stock, two things. This is how I'm planning on 
plan on rolling here on, on Saturday. So anyways, this is Foxfire 1.5, the latest iteration of the, of the models, uh, continuing to go forward, continuing to, to push this uh, uh, platform as far as we can get it. Thanks for watching.